Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be looking at various different types of hauling ships and how to basically get all of your stuff from A to B. We're going to be looking at the Tier 3 Exploration Frigates, the Tier 5 Covert Ops Frigates, and then the various different Tier 6 haulers like the Mammoth you see on screen now, which has very kindly been loaned to me by Zell. So thank you very much, Zell, for your loan of this ship. I will get it back to you in one piece, I promise. Now we'll then finally round this off by having a look at blockade runners and all the industrial ship skills that you'd need to fly all of the ships that we've mentioned in this video. So if you do find this video useful or enjoyable, let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and please do ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any notifications when a new video goes live. If you've got a topic you want me to cover in a future video, let me know by commenting down below or finding me on social media, especially the Cat Skull Academy Discord. And of course, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me over on Patreon. Details are on screen now. That said and done, let's talk about haulers. Now, if you've just got a few random bits and bobs that you need to move around, for example, if you've got things like rigs or modules, some salvage materials, blueprints and data cores, maybe even a small amount of ores or minerals, then ultimately the best place to start moving that around is with a Tech 3 Exploration Frigate. Now, every single one of the factions has one of these. The Amar have the Magnate, there's the Heron for the Kaldari, the Minmatar have the Probe, and the Galente have this hideous monstrosity that you see on screen now, the Imacus. Now, the Imacus is actually, I have to give CCP their credit for the design on this one, it's impressively difficult to make a ship this ugly from every different angle, but somehow they managed it. <laughs> now, jokes aside, ultimately the Imacus is actually the one that I would recommend. All four of those exploration frigates have a standard cargo hold size of 1,000 meters cubed. As you can see here, cargo hold capacity of 1,000 meters cubed. But the Imacus does get a special bonus for frigate command of a plus 5% cargo hold capacity per level. That means if, like me, you have frigate command maxed out at full level 5, then you have a cargo hold, as you can see here, of 1,250 meters cubed. That is usually enough to get most things from a low or null sec base of operations up to a high security market. Obviously, you're not going to be moving ships anytime soon, and you're not going to be moving a massive amount of ores, but just for the occasional module and bits and pieces like that, this is a great way to start. Now, if you do need a little bit more space, but you're not quite ready to go up to a hauler, that's where we look at the Tech 5 Exploration Frigates. The Tech 5 Exploration Frigates are basically the Covert Ops variants of the Tech 3 Exploration Frigates. So, for example, the Heron Covert Ops, the Imacus Covert Ops, the Magnate Covert Ops, and on screen now, the Probe Covert Ops. Now, all of these have a standard cargo hold size of 1,500 meters cubed, and if we look at the Imacus Covert Ops, you'll see that this actually gets an additional bonus to that of plus 8% cargo hold capacity per level. Now, I don't have an Imacus Covert Ops fully fitted out. I went for the probe because I like the way the probe looks, and it ultimately has very similar stats. If you're going for raw output on how big you can get that cargo hold, though, the Imacus Covert Ops is going to be the one you start with. That said, though, let's have a look at the probe covert ops. And I've touched on this briefly in my rigs video, but let's just have a look at it anyway. Now, as I said, this starts off with a basic cargo hold capacity of 1,500 meters cubed, but for every level in frigate command, you get an additional plus 5% cargo hold capacity. Ultimately, again, the Imacus covert ops does get that as an 8% increase. So if you're just after raw cargo hold capacity, the Imacus covert ops is the better of the two. That said, though, I do like the fact that the probe covert ops also has a reduction to its signature your radius it just gives this a few other like uses that you can use it for other than just cargo running again if you're interested in finding out more about that go watch the exploration frigates video that i did talking about all those different uses there and why i used the probe for those now here you can see that in the low slots i've actually gone for two cargo hold optimization rigs which do stack without penalty there is no penalty for fitting multiple of these i've got two of them fitted and they give a plus 50 percent cargo hold capacity bonus that means with those two rigs fitted and with frigate command at full level five you can see here that the probe cover ops has a whopping 3750 meters cubed of cargo hold space obviously the imacus cover ops is going to have even more you can actually jam an awful lot of stuff in that. Other than the fact that I think I've got some Tritanium and some bits and pieces around, I can pretty much fit my entire cargo hold, 
There we are. My entire item hold actually fits quite comfortably inside the probe cover ops there. You can see that filling up there, which I think is an insane little demonstration of just how much you can cram into this teeny tiny frigate. And I actually discovered whilst uh, warping through space the other day that as you look at the covert ops probe, you can actually see the cargo hold at the bottom and the bay doors are open with a force field on them, which I thought was really cool. But there we are. Those are the covert ops uh, exploration frigates and ultimately are probably going to be more than most people need to get stuff from A to B. But what if those aren't big enough? What if you are running a massive industrial command operation and you need to really haul some serious amount of stuff? Well, that's where the tech level 6 haulers come in and let's have a look at those. The Tech Level 6 transport ships are the big boys of the hauling industry. Ultimately, if you've got a ton of stuff that you need to get from A to B, these are the ships that you're going to use. Now, curiously, they don't actually appear in the Empire's ship trees, but you can find them on the market if you go to ships and industrial ships. Each of the Empires has its own unique variant of the Tier 6 transport ships, and they each have their own unique special hold, which we'll discuss now. So starting with the Kaldari Tyra. Ultimately, if we scroll down here, you can see that this thing comes with a cargo hold capacity standard of 8,100 meters cubed, but a ship hold capacity of 17,000 meters cubed. This means if you're looking to move ships from A to B, like you're trying to transport some frigates or destroyers up to the market to sell, then the Terra is going to be your ship of choice in order to do that. It should be noted that cargo hold in, uh, optimization rigs only affect the cargo hold, not the ship hold. If you want to increase that ship hold on this ship, you need advanced industrial ship command levels, um, a plus 5% bonus to ship hold capacity at each level. So if you've got advanced industrial ship command at 5, then you will get a 25% increase to that ship hold capacity. But what if it's not ships you're looking to move, rather oars? Well, that's where the Mammoth comes in. The Mammoth is the Minmatar version, and this has a standard cargo hold of 6,800 meters cubed, but an ore hold capacity of 17,000. Again, 17,000 meters cubed for ore, which can be increased by 5% for each level that you have in Advanced Industrial Ship Command. Now, what if it's not ores you're using, but minerals? If you've reprocessed those ores into minerals like Tritanium and Pyrite, then you're going to need the Cryos. The Cryos, again, if we scroll down, it's got the smallest standard cargo hold of 3,600 meters cubed, but it's got a mineral hold capacity of 17,000, which goes up by, you guessed it, 5% with levels in Advanced Industrial Ship Command. Finally, then we have the Amar Bestower. You may have seen me use this one in the video where we got our capture outpost up and running in the final test. This thing has a cargo hold of 5,300, but a structure hold capacity of 17,000 meters cubed, which again increases by 5% for each skill level you have in Advanced Industrial Ship Command. If you're looking to move an outpost into space and all the different modules that you want to slot into it, a Bestower is your best friend for that. Ultimately, these are humongous ships. You can see I've got the Mammoth on screen here now, the one you saw in the intro. Again, thank you ever so much, Kel, for loaning this to me. I will get it back to you in one piece. But they are humongous ships. They are big targets. You fly with a massive target on your back if you go through Null or Low Sec um, in one of these. People will try and gank them just because they're expensive, they're big, and they've usually got a ton of stuff on them. So, for example, then, let's have a look at how you could fit this one. Now, Zell has sent most of this to me, though I have given him a slight upgrade in one of the low slots. Thank you very much for the loan. If you look here in the low slots, we've gone for two of the Aura Warp Core Stabilizers. Now, if you've watched my video on Warp Core Stability, you'll understand that these reduce Warp Jammer Strength by two each just for having them fitted so that's minus four to warp jammer strength for having them fitted and you get an additional plus two if you activate them that means at standard you need a warp jammer strength of five in order to lock this thing down and stop it warping away again you'd need that to be at nine if i actually activate both of these which is a horrendous amount of warp jamming strength required to lock it into position now the third low slot we have gone for a federation navy damage control a damage control ultimately as it's standardly fitted uh, gives a passive bonus to shield, armor, and structure damage resistances across the board here, 8.23% to uh, electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive on all three of those sides, whether it's shield, armor, and structure. And once every 150 seconds, you can activate the damage control unit for 13 seconds to whack those resistances right the way up. Ultimately, that then gives a very resilient ship that whilst it's slowly aligning and adjusting, getting ready to jump out of harm's way, it's going to take no damage for those 13 seconds. 
Now into the low slots, we have gone here for two cargo hold optimization rigs. Again, do note that that does not change the ore hold here on the Mammoth, only the cargo hold. That means if we were to open this up and actually have a look at it in the inventory screen here, you'll see that inventory has gone from, I think it was uh, 5, 000, uh, 8,100 normally, up to 13,600 there for a standard hold. So that you can put anything you like in it. Then we've got the ore hold there of 17,000 meters cubed. That can only carry ore. That means there you've got more than 20, 30, sorry, more than 30,000 meters cubed of space in this thing, depending on what it is you want to carry. Ultimately, 30,000 meters cubed of ore will fit in this ship, which is a tremendous amount of ore to shift from low up to high. Now, at this point, I should give an honourable mention to the blockade runners, although they are at tech level 8 and tech level 10, so they are both an awful long way off yet. We're still waiting to even hit tech level 7 in a couple of weeks' time. Tech level 8 is a few months away. Tech level 9 and tech level 10 are almost a year out from this point. It's an insane length of time before we reach that far. Now, these are the Badger, the Reef, the Sigil, and the Nereus, not to be confused with the Nereus High Mobility, which is a delivery thing, which we will cover in a completely separate video, but let's have a look at the Reef to discuss what these actually are. Now, as the name Blockade Runner may suggest, the point of these is to be faster moving haulers. They're kind of a middle ground between the Tier 6 transport ships and the Tier 5 exploration frigates. What you've got here, looking at the wreath, is a cargo hold capacity of 4,800 meters cubed as standard, but then you get bonuses to the inertia modifier and warp speed based on industrial ship command and engine operation. Ultimately, these are designed to quickly run through blockades. If you've got a group of enemies that you think are camping a gate, a reef is going to be the better way to get you through there, or again, a badger or whatever. Now, you do then have the tier 10 versions of these, like the Badger 2, the Reef 2, the Nereus 2, and the Sigil 2. These, again, the same kind of thing, inertia modifier, flight velocity, that kind of thing. Larger cargo hold capacity, again, up to 11,000 meters cubed in this one, but it then has that plus one maximum covert ops cloaking device device so you can actually cloak this thing. You can jump into a null sec system, activate a cloaking device, warp to planet to avoid interdictor bubbles because <laughs> those are coming boys, those are coming. Warp to a planet to avoid the interdictor bubbles and then warp to the gate whilst still being closed. This is the point where being through null sec you stop using autopilot. Um, again, tech level 10 ship so I don't really want to talk about it too much at this point. That'll be another video for another time once we actually hit the level where we can build these things. Like everything else in Eve Echoes, if you're just looking into dabbling and hauling stuff around, if you're just moving some stuff from A to B temporarily or very occasionally, you don't need to worry about skill investments. You don't need skills in order to be able to move stuff from A to B. However, if you're going to start making a living out of it or making this one of your more primary focuses, then there are some skills that you should really pay attention to. Now, starting with cruising technology, if you're using the Tier 3 and Tier 5 exploration frigates, like the Imacus, the Probe, the Heron, those kind of things, then getting Frigate Command all the way up to level 5 is going to be very useful, because that's how you get the most out of those ship bonuses. Things like the Imacus Cargo Hold, um, that kind of thing, are all based on Frigate Command. The actual skill itself isn't overly useful for those frigates, they've got a decent inertia modifier and uh, flight velocity anyway. Obviously, it, the, the bonuses here help out, but it's mainly because because of what the ships do with those skills. As I said, the fact that the Imacus gets an additional 5% cargo hold at Tech 3 and an 8% on the Tech 5 ship, that kind of thing from Frigate Command makes this very worthwhile leveling up. Now, the other industrial ship skills are always right at the bottom of the trees here. If we scroll right the way down, industrial ship command. Now, having said that the actual skill itself isn't overly important for the frigates, it's more the fact that the ships get bonuses for it that matter. Here with industrial ships, the skill actually makes a huge difference. For a frigate, who really cares that it's got an inertia modifier reduction or velocity up? They're fairly, you know, inertialess and they've got good velocity anyway. For something like a Tyra, a Mammoth, or a Bestower, etc., then this, this suddenly comes into a force of its own. That 25% reduction to inertia means you align so much quicker. That industrial ship velocity means you get away so much quicker and can move so much quicker. With industrial ships, this alone as a basic skill becomes important. But again, you'll have seen a lot of those ships get bonuses for industrial ship command and advanced industrial ship command. So if you're flying those Tech 6 transport ships, make it your mission to get industrial ship command leveled right the way up. 
If you're looking to run the blockade runners eventually, again, have a look at what they benefit from and start considering whether or not you're going to trade into that. You've got plenty of time to do it though, unless you're watching this video in 2021, in which case, hi future me. <laughs> Otherwise, defense upgrade is always a useful one to have, whether that's for a frigate defense upgrade for the frigates, or whether you scroll all the way down to industrial to ship defense upgrade. What this does straight up is give you 500 extra shield, 500 extra armor, and 500 extra hull at level 5. That's 1,500 extra, uh, extra hit points there that someone has to chew through before they blow you up. In advanced then adds that on again but as percentages and those percentages get pretty high it's five percent per level so even if you only get this up to advanced industrial ship defense upgrade four that's still an additional 20 percent health across the board which is massive and just makes you so much more survivable i mean it should be noted that yes there is under engineering and industrial ship engineering but ultimately this is a skill that doesn't see much in the way of use ultimately even as you're moving around, you'll find that your capacitor, your power grid, and your uh, your warp capacitor requirements aren't really being tested anyway. Unless you're really fitting a ship out, um, an industrial ship out, to perhaps put some guns on it because you're trying to gank people, um, or you're running in a fleet where you've just... You, like, you're running in a convoy, is what I'm trying to say. You're running in a convoy where there's a couple of you, and one of you is going to put guns on there in case you get jumped. Then you might want it, but it's a very, very niche skill. For me, ultimately, it's much more important to go with the command, frigate command and industrial ship command, and to definitely get that industrial ship or frigate defense upgrade in there as well. Those are your main skills there. It should be worth noting, um, I'm not going to talk about it in this particular video because it's, it's, it's another topic for another time. There is also the freight skill, which a lot of people look at if they're thinking of getting into hauling and go, oh, wouldn't that be useful? This is only useful if you're doing those interbus deliveries, if you're taking stuff from one ITC to another in the cargo hold crates. Ultimately, the delivery hold, delivery system, and freighting is something I will cover in a separate video. I did touch on it briefly back in the OBT. Obviously, quite a few things have changed. Give me time, I'm getting round to that one. And there we have it. Hopefully that's everything that you need to know about moving all of your stuff from A to B, whether that's taking stuff from low or null sec up into high sec to sell on the market, or whether you're relocating from station to station and you just need to move a load of ores or ships between point to point, this is how you would do it. Hopefully that's given you some inspiration, maybe given you a couple of ideas. Ultimately, a lot of people will pay you to move their stuff from A to B. When we re relocated our stations, we had an awful lot of stuff that needed shifting, so people will pay to use your cargo hold to get their stuff down to where it needs to go. Consider speaking to your corporation and see if that's something they might have a use for if this sounds really cool to you. But what about you? Are you hauling already? Do you have a particular favourite hauling ship that you like to use? Tell me your best hauling story when you were jumped by someone and narrowly escaped death. Or heck, maybe like me, you're a pirate and you've taken a couple of these out already. Anyway folks, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.